Vibe coding, you've heard the term. It's when you fully give in to the vibes and embrace LLMs to do all the coding for you. Literally all the coding. Like so much that you don't read errors, you don't read the code at all and fully embrace the LLM model to do literally everything. So in this video, I'm gonna go a bit into how professional developers use items like, you know, cursor AI, windsurf, or any other AI model, and how that compares to vibe coding. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over 10 years of experience, and I've helped over 100,000 developers learn and grow within their craft. So let's jump into the video. So to start, the vibe coding term started on February 2nd, 2025, due to a tweet that went viral. And to quote the tweet, there's a new kind of of coding I call vibe coding where you fully give in to the vibes and you know what I kind of like it also make sure you notice I said kind of as of right now I do use cursor AI which is professional coding and vibe coding code editor and I switch between GPT Claude or Gemini based on whatever the most popular coding model is at that specific time if I'm starting a project from scratch I usually start by giving the coding model an in-depth prompt of what I want and pretty much accept whatever it gives me to start this I do believe gives me a big head start on development as I do not have to set up all the boilerplate code from the beginning. I also create quite a lot of YouTube content and I truly do think it saves me time. This is not me being lazy, but focusing my energy into the task and product at hand. However, after I receive the first draft of code, I always go through it. LLMs always seem to be a little bit behind on the most modern version of frameworks and technologies, so there's always something I have to clean up to get the initial version of the code exactly how I want. Now, after getting the initial version of the code working, I do then ask the LLM for a rough draft on ideas, and I take it very slowly after this. I usually ask the LLM to create something small for me, maybe only a single file change. This helps me stay in charge of the AI versus the other way around where the AI is now in charge of me. For example, I may ask the LLM to create me a service function that joins three different tables based on, you know, different criteria, and it does all the, you know, SQL model or SQL alchemy joins for me behind scenes. And then I can kind of look through it and see if it looks right. This is the kind of jobs models would be able to perform and I would be able to validate it on my side. I also really like sometimes highlighting different service functions or functions within the code and then ask the LLM with a prompt if there's a better way to rewrite this code or reorganize this code that promotes both performance and readability. Again, something small that I can validate myself before moving the code into my project's code base. One thing I always stay away from though is blindly accepting code changes, except for the very first one, because of this quote. There's nothing more permanent than a quick fix or quick solution with a promise I'll refactor later. A promised refactor pretty much never gets refactored, and that piece of code will live for years, if not forever. Now, I know my step-by-step -step solution is not 100% vibe coding, but it is AI coding, and I know many developers who code professionally and for money that code this way. Using AI to code is becoming a standard. It is becoming a norm. I do believe all developers should be able to use AI to help accelerate their software development. Now, a quick note, I do pay for Cursor AI, and this is not a sponsored Cursor AI video, but I do think it saves me a, quite a bit of time. I justify the payment that, hey, Cursor AI is worth it if it saves me at least one hour per month, and that I do believe it saves me. Now, doing this type of development, I have definitely ran into pros and cons. It's not only pro and you know colorful rainbows there are some cons the pros would be that i do believe i get the initial project foundation created faster like i said before i give a pretty in-depth initial prompt and cursor ai can create all the folders and files to get it off the ground and yes i almost always blindly accept the first draft if i'm creating the product from scratch i also do believe it helps me with creating code faster five years ago if i got stuck we would just use google but now we can use an llm model to get moving again now this pro is under the condition that you already know how to do software development. I know for a fact if my wife, who has a math degree, so she is very intelligent, tried to create a product vibe coding, she would not be able to do it. And that's because using tools like Cursor AI or whatever it is, software engineers or software developers are able to supercharge their ability. But if you do not have coding ability, you don't just get coding ability. And that's really why I believe software engineering jobs are currently safe. Non-technical individuals cannot take advantage of the AI coding wave the same way we can. 
And I believe the AI full stack solutions out there are not even close to creating products that real developers are capable of creating. Now, the cons of using these AI coding models is the fact that I do believe sometimes my critical thinking for development has gotten slightly worse. Before, I had to type everything and think through everything for eight hours a day straight. This got me really good at creating my foundation and my fundamentals for being able to create products. I mean, there was times it kind of felt like you had like magic powers because no one really knew what you were doing. And you kind of got that because you were putting the grind in. You knew how software was created. You knew how the web works. And a lot of people don't have that understanding. But I have noticed that some of my critical thinking ability and maybe critical design has taken a little hit due to AI. But AI is still allowing me to create products quicker. So I think it's a fair trade-off. Another big con I have noticed from AI coding assistance is the impact impact on junior, mid, and just like brand new developers getting into the field. They're relying on AI way too much for coding. And since they're relying on the AI code, they don't have a strong enough foundation to help dig themselves out of hallucinations that might start piling up. And really, this ends up complicating two things the maintainability and the scalability of the product. If you're not 100% sure of what the code is doing and where the code is doing it, the code is unmaintainable. If something happens to your code and you cannot fix it without relying on the AI bot, the code is unmaintainable. You cannot rely on the AI bot to fix errors it made in the first place. Secondly, scalability gets hit hard if the application is designed poorly. Therefore, if you have no experience at design, but keep asking AI to add more and more features and allow the AI to blindly scale the app, you will run into scalability issues. And this scalability issue is just a code problem, not even a hardware problem that you will likely face later on. So my two cents right now is to use AI, embrace it, learn from it, but do not 100% rely on it. There's a major difference between vibe coders and real software engineers who use AI to accelerate their work.